Day 54, 11,875 verses left. The book of Jeremiah takes place at the same time as the kings that you'll find out about on days 28 and 33. There's a little roundup about who they are right at the beginning. This was the time when Jerusalem was on the brink of total ruin and it was Jeremiah's job to let everybody know about it. They didn't believe him though, so it's pretty flipping awkward. And because it's going to be such a tough job, God makes it clear that he chose Jeremiah to do it before he was even born. Hey, what if he'd wanted to be a fireman? God's main issue is that they've totally rejected him and that they've invented a load of gods themselves that can't do anything. And if you're wondering whether God's ever done anything for them, just check out days 1 to 25, but especially day 5. Oh, sorry about the hair. There's a lot of talk in these early chapters about adultery. What the heck? The Israelites were married to God? The underlying message is that in the same way that adultery ruins a marriage, Israel have ruined their relationship with God by worshipping other gods. A load of them already got in a load of trouble for this. Check out 2 Kings 17. And the message of Jeremiah is that now it's Jerusalem's turn to be in a load of trouble because they keep rejecting the God who rescued them on day 5. You can see God's perspective on this in chapter 5 verse 19 and you can see why Jeremiah is going to have such a tough time in verses 11 to 17. You can also see a lot in Jeremiah that other prophets are saying, no, but everything's fine, everything's going to be okay. Now in this context it was a little bit like watching an avalanche coming towards you and going, oh, let's build a snowman. This is so urgent that God tells Jeremiah to stand at the temple gate and tell everybody on the way in that if they don't turn back to God they'll be totally doomed. I hope he remembered his sandwich board. At the same time God tells Jeremiah in 727 that literally nobody's going to listen to him. Pfft, he might as well have built a snowman after all. Other prophets are still banging on about peace in chapter 8, but in chapter 9 you actually come across the Grim Reaper. God tries to warn them that Jerusalem is going to become a heap of ruins because they've turned away from his law, but they just don't seem to care. At the end of chapter 9, it looks like there was no point in them getting rid of their foreskins, but they should have had open heart surgery instead. What the heck? Chapter 10 is all about the futility of trusting in idols, and Jeremiah asks God for guidance as he carries on. Tune in tomorrow for a big party pooper.